Hi, I'm Belinda Carley, the Director of the Institute of Personal Care Science and I get asked a lot, how do you create SPF 50 plus sunscreens or how do you create high SPF sunscreens in general? So in this video, I'm going to show you one way of putting a oil in water formulation together. Now let me just explain this a little. Normally when we're creating high SPF sunscreens, we're needing to use a lot of UV filters to achieve the high SPF rating. Now we need a lot of these filters so that we can get the high SPF required. Now when we use a lot of SPF filters, they usually feel pretty ordinary in a formula. They may need extra solvents to go into the formula and they definitely need to spread well. Part of the way of achieving a good SPF in your formula is to make sure it spreads really evenly over the skin. And we also need to stabilize these UV filters over a prolonged period of time to make sure that the product you use today still provides the claimed SPF protection in two or three years from now. Usually when we use a lot of UV filters, we need to use a lot of long spreading lipids, usually long spreading esters or oils in a formulation to help the UV filters spread well and form a nice continuous film on the skin. Just to give you a bit of an idea of what I'm talking about, you can see in the diagrams here, if my UV filters agglomerate or clump together, I won't get a very good SPF protection rating. Whereas if I have a nice even film over the skin, I'll get effective SPF rating. Now in these two diagrams, I've used the same number of incident arrows representing UV light and the same amount of little ovals representing my UV filters in both diagrams. But you can see where they clump together, a lot of the sun's rays are getting through. Whereas when I've got a nice even film, not only would the product feel so much better on the skin and rub in well, but it also provides the best possible UV protection for the amount of filter used. The next question I usually get asked is, Belinda, why do we use different types of UV filters in sunscreen formulas, especially when the SPF is really high? Well, as an example, I have straight zinc oxide here for you. This is two grams of zinc oxide. It's micronized zinc oxide, but it's still zinc oxide. Now, zinc oxide is the only broad spectrum UV filter that will provide protection from UVA the type of UV rays that actually cause the DNA damage and also provides protection against UVB. UVB rays are the type of rays that cause the burning and redness associated with sunburn. It's actually UVA that's more damaging to your skin over time. That's the one that causes the cancers. So sunscreens need to be broad spectrum protection. The UVA rating of a formula needs to be at least one third of the SPF rating of the formula. To make that simple, it means that if your product had an SPF of 30, then the UVA of that formula should be at least 10. So we need to achieve this at least one third ratio. And if we're gonna use just one material, this is the one material that will do it. But hopefully you've had a look and gone, well gee, Belinda, that's a lot of powder for two grams, and you're correct. Now to get an SPF of 50 plus in a formula, I'd need to use about 45 grams of zinc oxide per 100 grams of product. And as you can see, it's very chalky, very powdery, and it leaves quite a white residue on the skin. Not to mention, it feels really chalky and terrible. So if I wanna put that into a formula, I can coat it or I can put it in as a dispersion or I can mix it with some long spreading lipids and put them into the formula. But when I do that, I am then going to have about 70% oil in my formula with the zinc oxide included. And of course, that means I can't make an oil in water emulsion. 
So I'm not going to be using that in my product today. I'm going to be using a combination of other UV filters to achieve the SPF 50 plus protection. Now there are a couple of reasons why we need to use different combinations of UV filters to achieve a high SPF. The first reason is we really need to achieve that broad spectrum protection for consumers. The other reason is different UV filters will protect at a maximum absorbance of different wavelengths. What this means is we will have peaks and troughs of protection from different UV filters. So to get good broad spectrum protection and protect that consumer properly, we need to use a combination of UV filters to get good peaks over a continuous UVA and B spectrum so that the consumer not only doesn't get burnt, but doesn't get the more damaging sun's rays UVA either. Another reason we need to use combinations of UV filters is different regulations around the world limit the inputs of different UV filters. Today's formula is going to be formulated to comply with Australia's TGA requirements, which I've got to say are pretty much the toughest in the world when it comes to formulating a sunscreen. So by me showing you how to achieve compliance and an oil in water formula that complies with TGA regulations, if you're in any other part of the world, it's going to be easier for you. So what I'm doing in this formula as well, I'm going to be showing you a couple of tips and tricks of how to solubilize certain UV filters, as well as how to stabilize the overall formula over a prolonged period of time. One of the problems when you formulate with UV filters, especially as you start to need to achieve higher SPFs, is you need more of them. And they can crystallize out of a formula if not kept stable. If you've ever used a sunscreen and you felt crystally or chunky bits in that formula, it means that the UV filters are crystallizing out of the formula. And when they do that, they're not giving you the protection that's written on the label. So I'm gonna show you a couple of ways to overcome these issues in this video. I'm also gonna be showing you how to stabilize a very high oil content even when it's still an oil in water emulsion. And I'm also going to be incorporating a water resistant agent. So I'm going to show you all of that in this video. So let's get started. Now, one of the first things I'm going to do is I'm going to first solubilize this powder here. This is benzophenone 3 and it works best when it is first mixed with some isopropyl myristate. Now, isopropyl myristate is a long spreading ester. It's also very polar and it suits this material really well. So we're first going to combine these two materials so that we can turn that crystally powder into a solvent mixture. Now we've done that step, we're also going to mix the other UV filters together and then combine all of these. And then I'm going to add my non-ionic emulsifier blend. Now this particular blend I've selected because it will help us get the stability we require into this finished formulation from only a relatively low input and also the finished product then won't feel too waxy or heavy on the skin either but still have that great stability. Then I'm just going to heat this phase because I am actually going to make my oil phase uh, all mixed. Heat it until the waxes have melted and then I'm going to allow it to cool because I can't add this phase hot to my water phase because I have a temperature sensitive polymer in there. So I need this phase to be mixed, melted and cooled back to a cool liquid ready for emulsifying before I can introduce it to the water phase.
Now we need to allow this to cool. Now, while the oil phase is cooling, we can get the water phase ready. Now, what I have here is the water and a chelating agent, and to this I'm going to add an electrolyte resistant polymer. Now, this particular polymer is very, very important because it will handle all sorts of electrolytes and it also helps stabilize this very high lipid content that's in this formula. Now when adding this polymer, we need to make sure it is thoroughly wetted out. And on the day that you add it and mix it, it is not uncommon for it to look somewhat like that. Now in a larger vat, you can stir for a bit longer, but it does need time to hydrate. So one of the best things you can do is actually prepare it, put your preservative in here, cover it, and leave it overnight to hydrate, and then it will swell fully. Here is one I prepared yesterday, so you can see it's fully swollen. It's a very stable and viscous gel. We are relying partially on this polymeric network to help stabilize our formula, as well as hold all of the UV filters homogenous in the formula, so we get that really even spread for the best SPF protection. Now, to this, we are now going to add our water-soluble UV filter. And that is this material here. Now, as it comes as a powder form, it is in an acid form. So we add this to our gel. And we need to stir this through. Now, this is not water soluble in its current form, not very water soluble at all. We actually need to neutralize it and then make sure that the final pH is between 7.5 and 8 so that it remains fully soluble throughout the shelf life. If it doesn't, if that pH drops, this product will become crystalline and be those scratchy crystals that you sometimes feel in sunscreens. You can see here, it's not soluble yet. So I'm now going to mix this through and then I'm going to neutralize it to a pH of 7.5 to 8, so it becomes water soluble. You can see now it's becoming very soluble. So we're just gonna do our last minor pH checks and adjustments on this. Once we've got it between 7.5 and 8, we can then add the water soluble waterproofing agent. And that is this material here. This is a Bakizan product. You would have seen me use this. These are one of my favorites to use as a waterproofing material. I use this in my sweatproof makeup video. So you can watch that and see the results of using this material. So I'm going to add that into my water phase and then give that a good stir through. Now we can add our oil phase. Now we need to add this uh, when it has cooled because uh, the heat is not suitable with the Bakuzan material. So we can now add this and then give it a good stir. SPF 50. Now it will be a slightly higher viscosity by tomorrow, uh, but it is meant to be in a lotion form. As you can see, easy to rub in, no ghosting, and has great water resistance as well. Not greasy at all, and dries really fast so that it's nice and light and weightless. So you're at the beach, enjoying the beach without all that gritty sand on you. So there we go, that's how you make an SPF 50 plus sunscreen. Now I just want to point out that this is just one way of using a combination of UV filters to create that high SPF. 
but you will need to make sure any combination of UV filters you select will give that broad spectrum protection and still enable the high SPF to be achieved. What you've seen in this video is the way that I treated certain materials to help make sure that they didn't crystallize out over time, otherwise you won't get the SPF benefits. So if you're gonna use different UV filters, make sure that you're also looking at their compatibilities and particular needs to make sure you keep them stable in any formula you create as well. Now I could have made my life quite simple and made this into a water and oil emulsion, but I specifically wanted to show you how to achieve a high SPF from an oil in water lotion and also show you a good waterproofing agent that is water soluble and goes easily into that water phase. So again, you can make these formulas a bit more simple for you by using water in oil emulsions as the base. But today was about showing you how to stabilize UV filters, why you need so many in the first place and how to stabilize a very high input of oil content, even in an oil in water emulsion with loads of electrolytes added. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Please leave any questions or comments below and remember to subscribe to find out about all our video notifications. Happy formulating.